Everything in human biology, physiology, psychology runs according to the day-night rhythm, which is also called the circadian rhythm. Circadian means around the day. And then this, this is going to be a quick video introduction to the circadian rhythm. Now, we look at these two, these two images, they'll give us an idea of the, the, the way in which our physiology runs according to a day-night rhythm. So this is, you'll find many of these kinds of images online because there are many, many, many things which run according to a day-night rhythm. This image here shows just a few of them. I'll pinpoint just one or two. So starting from 6 a.m. in the morning, you'll see that the secretion of melatonin, the hormone melatonin, stops in the pineal gland around about 6 a.m. Bowel movements start in the morning. The body starts to, you know, empty the bowels. Testosterone levels are the highest point in the uh, mid-morning. Our alertness, our coordination, our reaction times, our cardiovascular and muscular strengths are strongest in the daylight hours. Our blood pressure reaches its highest levels around about 6 p.m. Our body temperature reaches the highest levels around about that time. Melatonin starts being secreted again toward the end of the evening. Bowel movements stop the late, late night. And then we have our, in the early hours from midnight to about 6 a.m., deeper sleep, lowest body, body temperature. Blood pressure drops right down. And then as we start getting toward, you know, early rising time, blood pressure rises, melatonin secretion stops, and the cycle starts again. Similarly, on this image here, this is a, this is a, a fascinating image showing all of the different, or some of the different hormones whose secretion by various different glands in the body are, uh, operate according to day-night rhythm. So you'll see here in the morning, you'll see spikes in testosterone, in cortisol, in epinephrine, blood pressure, we talked about already, but hemoglobin and serum iron levels are highest around about midday. You see around about 6 p.m., insulin levels are at the highest, cholesterol levels are at their highest. And then toward the end, toward the evening, you see leptin levels are at their highest. Then between around about midnight and 6 a.m., all of these hormones are at their highest level. Of course, melatonin is at its highest level in the, in the middle of the night. And also all the, you know, these various growth hormones, uh, anti-inflammatories and so forth. All of these hormones, the, the secretion and circulation of these hormones operate according to a day and night rhythm. They operate according to the circadian rhythm. and that results in our bodily, our bodies, you know, operating differently depending on what time of day it is. The message about what time of day it is that comes to those systems and those organs comes largely through the central uh, clock in our brains that's known as the suprachiasmatic nucleus here, it says SCN. And you'll see the input comes into the suprachiasmatic nucleus based on the environment. So what time, we're, when are we are eating, when we're sleeping, when we're exercising, all those things have a, have a, a massive impact on how our bodies function. Similarly, our genetics can have an impact on that. And also, you know, of course, the light that comes in through our eyes sends messages to the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which then sends messages to various other parts of the body. So we've talked about how melatonin is, is, uh, is secreted by the pineal gland. The pineal gland is this gland here, right in the middle of the brain, very small, looks like a pine, uh, which is why it's called pineal gland. It has been referred to as the third eye. Uh, and the, the idea is that once upon a time, that was actually an eye, but the, the brain, as, as humans evolved, so the theory goes, the brain envelops the pineal gland so that it's no longer a visual receptor, but it still retains the ability to you know, translate light into 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 action, and and what it does when there's no light, it then secretes melatonin. In the daytime, it's off, but when there's no light, it's on. Similarly, the the suprachiasmatic nucleus sends messages to all of the clocks in the rest of the body using body temperature, hormones, and other other messaging uh, messaging forms. This sends messages to the various different organs, various different systems, and also to all of the different cells. Every, every cell in the body has a clock, has a, has, has a molecular clock inside it, enabling that cell to function according to, you know, to do the right thing at the right time. That's the basic point, is that our bodies need to make sure that they're doing the right thing at the right time. They can't do everything all at the same time. We have to conserve energy, and we have to organize what we're doing properly. It's like a massive project management 
the project to manage. And so this, the, the super charismatic nucleus is a central player in this, as are all of the clocks in all of our cells and all of our, all of our organs and systems. And you'll see on this image here, it shows that muscles, liver, the liver, pancreas, fat, all do different things depending on what time of day it is. To look at one bodily system in particular, this is the gastrointestinal tract, the digestive system. And as this image explains, that when the, 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 the message coming regarding light or darkness coming into the uh, suprachiasmatic nucleus, going into the the, the, the central clock, then sends messages to the gastrointestinal tract to do certain things at certain times. We saw how bowel movements stop at night time. Why? Well, because the the the, uh, the gut has received the message from the brain that it's night time, so it's time it's not time to be digesting food. However, uh, sorry, similarly, food sends a message. So it so when food comes in, it triggers the the, the gut to start doing what it's supposed to be doing. It takes messages from both uh, the brain and also from from food and from our activities as uh, our activities as well. And then, what does it do with that information? Well, when our circadian rhythms are in homeostasis or are in optimal condition, the and that means regular sleeping and waking up times, avoiding light at night, regular eating schedules, and avoidance of eating late at night. Then the 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 gastrointestinal tract does all of these great things for us. Cell proliferation, motility, which is moving the food through the tract, digesting protein, carbs, fats, and so on. It does all of that. You know, immunity, the microbiota in the gut is, you know, works properly when we're, when we're in sync with our circadian, you know, with our environment, our circadian environment. But if we're not in sync, and usually that shift workers working late at night, eating irregularly, eating late at night, then unfortunately the gut is dysfunctional, and that results in metabolic syndrome, uh, ulcers, infl inflammatory bowel disease, colorectal cancer, and so on. And in actual fact, this is the case for many of our bodily systems. This, these are just three on the screen here, but uh, if you research into the circadian rhythms, rhythms you'll see that actually this has living out of sync with our circadian with us with our circadian environment results in many many uh, poor health outcomes shift workers unfortunately are are the ones who are where it's most clear to see the 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 the, the negative impact of circadian mismanagement so we've talked about the the, the gastrointestinal tract you'll see here studies show that uh, people with poor circadian rhythms or circadian mis mismatch are more likely to suffer from gas from gastrointestinal disorders and metabolic syndrome. So that's things like obesity, uh, high I believe high blood pressure, high levels of fat in the blood blood vessels, and so on and so forth. Then you've got cardiovascular disease. So shift workers, unfortunately, are more likely to have high blood pressure, more likely to have high, oh, this is, you know, adiposity, which is fat, visceral fat and high uh, fat levels. They're going to more likely to have increased inflammation, which is going to make them more likely to suffer from cardiovascular disease, which is, which is a huge, huge killer, premature killer of humans, unfortunately. And then in the middle here, you've got the brain is also impacted by this. So Poor, med poor circadian rhythm results in melatonin synthesis abnormality. We'll talk about that, talk about that in a minute. Work-related stress, poor sleep, which results in neuro neurological disorders, including neurodegenerative orders like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, and also poor mental health, depression, and so on. So it's a very serious thing. This is not some, you know, weird, out there, you know, kooky idea. This is backed up by many decades of science that living out of sync with our circadian rhythms being out of sync with our environment results in very poor health outcomes. Now we've talked about melatonin synthesis a little bit and I wanted to just uh, zero in on that a little bit more. First of all we talked about how the the time of day you know indicates how much melatonin we're going to have circulating from the pineal gland in our blood and this this shows it very clearly here that 
the levels of, pineal, of uh, melatonin in our bloodstream are highest between around about 10 p.m. and 9 a.m. in the morning, and then they're lowest in the daytime. Again, that's a message that's dependent on the message of light. When there's light, melatonin secretion is suppressed. When there's no light, melatonin is secreted. Now, blue light in particular is the, is the wavelength of light that has the strongest inhibitory impact on melatonin secretion. So blue light, as you know, the different colors that we perceive with our eyes represent or are, are, are functions of the different lengths of the light waves. Blue light is around about 470 nanometers in length, and blue light basically stops melatonin from being secreted. But that doesn't mean that blue light is bad. Melaton sorry, blue light is actually essential for our health. As you can see, it's, it regulates our, cir our circadian rhythms. We need to stop melatonin being, being uh, secreted in the daytime because we need to be alert. We need to get up and get on with it. You know, we would not have made it this far as humans if we didn't, you know, we weren't able to get up, go and find food, go and look after the children, go and hunt, go and, you know what I mean? Live, live life. So we need blue light for that. It increases, it has many health benefits. It increases our alertness, our cognitive function as well, our skin health, our mood, all of these things, our metabolism as well. We talked about how, you know, bowel movements don't happen till the daytime. Blue light helps to kickstart the, 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 the bowel movements. Similarly, blue light triggers the, the secretion of cortisol. Cortisol is known as a stress hormone, but you need cortisol in order to you know get our brains functioning and get us alert so that we can go out and enjoy the day and and live our best lives now the problem is of course in modern society that we have artificial light on all the time well there's two problems one is that in the mornings in the daytime we, we're indoors so we're not getting much bright light from the daylight so unfortunately that's that means that we're not as alert as we could be and then at night time, when it should be dark so that melatonin kicks in and we get a good night's sleep, we're on our tablets, we're on our phones, we're watching TV, and that's resulting in us not really being able to sleep. Similarly, you can see on this image here that blue light has can the blue light at the wrong time, i.e., night time, can have negative impacts on our memory, on our ability to learn, it can build up neurotoxins, it can result in depression, obesity risk cancers even, cataracts and eye problems. Very, very serious thing. Blue light at night is absolutely terrible for our health. Unfortunately, we have companies like Netflix, which make it their business to keep us awake. Their CEO in uh, 2017 said that their biggest competitor is sleep. He said, when you think about it, when you watch a show from Netflix, you get addicted to it, you stay up late at night. We are competing with sleep. You know, so that's their modus operandi is to get us to stay awake at night. Because then, you know, the longer we stay awake, the more their, their shows we can watch, the more money they can make, because make, the more addicted we get to it. So it's really essential that we, the, you know, the more TV that we watch, the more tablet time we go on our devices and tablets, the harder it is for us to sleep because the melatonin secretion is being prevented by that blue light. There's also evidence that people with darker eyes are are... Well, the good thing is for people with darker eyes, not so good for people with lighter eyes, is that darker eyes are less affected by this issue. But that's something I'll talk about in a, in a, in a future video. To wrap up real quickly, I wanted to just point out that melatonin levels are zero when we are babies in our in our mother's wombs. And the point with that is that, that we, we depend exclusively on the circadian rhythm that's coming from our mothers. So if the mother, the pregnant mother has poor circadian alignment, that means that the baby's going to get poor circadian alignment. And I haven't looked at this in any detail, but I'd imagine that result that can result in a lot of poor health outcomes for newborns. Very quickly, what are some tips we can do to get our circadian rhythms in check? Well, here's a, here's a good slide here. Get sunlight early in the morning, as early as you can after waking up, get outside, get the daylight in your eyes. That will kickstart the day for you. It will stop the melatonin from being secreted. It will it will kickstart the cortisol and 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 the you know your your bodily systems. Exercise in the daytime. Keep naps short. Avoid caffeine. Avoid electronics at bed. I would suggest as well that you get, um, look into things like blue bl blue blocking light bulbs, and turn your lights down low toward the end of the night. Sleep consistently. Eat consistently. Don't eat close to bedtime. Follow these tips, and you will have a much healthier circadian rhythm. 
Thank you for watching. And in the next video, we will talk a little bit more about melatonin that comes from other parts of the body besides the, the pineal gland.